I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest, just head on over to our website, missionmatters.com, and click on Be a Guest to Apply. All right, so did I have Yanni Twami on the line, and he is co-founder over at I'm Aware. Yanni, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. All right, Yanni. So uh, excited to get into I'm Aware. I mean, you're, you're really working on some innovative stuff. And we'll also talk about, I understand you, you have a lot of expansion going on. You're going into a Series B round. We'll talk about that, what that looks like and where you've been and the plans for the future. But I guess maybe just to get us started, um, you know, you're in the healthcare industry now. You didn't start out with a healthcare background. Like, like, like how'd you get on this journey? Yeah, well, um, I, I think, you know, nobody ever knows where their five and 10 year career is going to take them. Uh, I have a uh, product and technology background. And then unfortunately, I had a family member get sick. And they survived the experience. But what we learned out of it, my family and I, was that um, my, my brother actually could have had this all be prevented mm. if some very basic tests were run six months, 12 months earlier. And, and so that was the question I asked myself. I'm like, how were we not running those tests? How do you get, you know, kind of middle-aged guys who avoid the doctor like the plague to start going to the doctor? Um, how do we start getting data on these people so that they can become aware of conditions that could be preventable, like heart disease and cancers and things like that? So it was actually my own family story that got me into this. And then just a few years later, it's almost like this little bit of serendipity. I came across a doctor that had uh, debunked Theranos and he was focused on testing small volumes of blood. And when I saw that what he was building was actually working, I kind of just quit my job that day and said, we got to join forces and take a test that you can run at home and put that in front of people so they can screen for these types of conditions. And after I told him my story about, you know, my brother, he's like, absolutely a test like this could have actually changed his life for the better, you know, six months earlier. So wow. that was it. Quit the day job and jump just kind of headfirst into this startup with one of these, you know, world renowned doctors. And we got started on building out what became I'm Aware today. Wow. What a story. And, uh, you know, there's some people watching this right now that have a, you know, they have a urge, they have a business they want to start. And while I'm not recommending uh, when you get a good idea, you, you just, you, you jump off the ledge day one, so to speak. But um, that being said, there's a difference between having an idea and wanting to do it and, you know, going out there and just and committing and going to that next level, whether you're, if you're creating a new product and it doesn't matter, the industry it doesn't have to be healthcare. Like what kind of advice would you give to the people that are out there watching this right now that are thinking, you know, I got this itch, I got this thing I want to do. Um, Cause it's not easy. It's not easy to make that leap. Yeah. Well, you know, you're totally right. I guess I maybe made a, a little bit of a slight exaggeration. I definitely ran the idea by my wife first. <laughs> <laughs> before I jumped off the ledge, but you're totally right. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm already 40s and, and I'd always wanted to do a startup and I just never kind of took that first step through my 20s, through my 30s, but I had that itch, just like you said. And really it was about taking that first step. And ironically, every step afterwards got easier. So wow. the first step was just to have confidence in myself that I could do something impactful. Mm -hmm. And when I got over that first step, then everything else started to become clear, you know, meeting other doctors, starting to take this roadshow to investors, all of that was new to me. But the fact that I kind of just believed in myself and believed in this idea that we could actually help people screen for conditions from home, all of that became easier, you know, once that first step was taken. So my biggest advice for, for anybody who wants to do something is if you can believe in yourself, then others will believe in you. Oh, well said. And I, and I like the I like the point you brought up earlier about, you know, nobody really knows what their career path is going to be in, you know, five years, 10 years. I mean, things change. It's funny. I thought I'd be in finance forever. If you would have told me I went to school to be a podcaster, that's incorrect. Podcasts didn't even exist when I was in school. So, so how would I know? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's awesome. So um, like looking back at, at I'm Aware and, you know, the, the early roots and we'll, we'll talk about also the, the explosive growth and what you're doing. Um, but, you know, we all learn as entrepreneurs, uh, especially this is your, you know, your, your, um, your main startup, the first one that you started before that you were, you know, um, corporate America, we'll say. Uh, what kind of things have you learned along the way? Yeah, the, all of the things I feel like they don't teach you at school. Mm -hmm. um, great communication skills, hustle 
perseverance, um, being comfortable being told no a lot of times, and still just like, you know, shaking that off and going to the next meeting, going to the next doctor. Uh, a lot of that kind of what I'll call soft skills. I really had no clue about, you know, prior to doing on this startup and just how important those are. Um, being able to speak with passion, you know, when you find something you believe in, you know, people just get attracted to that. So I never realized the power of, of some of those, you know, really basic skills that some people really have. Uh, I certainly didn't have going to school for computer science. You know, they don't, they definitely don't teach you that when you're, you're coding applications. <laughs> so yeah, so those are those are some of the kind of the best learnings is just making you you know a better communicator and and ultimately um, you know when you start helping people and you see that what you're doing can help people, mm-hmm. other people really just want to jump on board and help you help others. So it becomes this kind of like avalanche uh, that just takes off uh, whether you want it to or not. People want to jump in and help you. So. So healthcare industry, I know that's a broad term. I know that encompasses a whole lot. And there's a lot of different sides of that, whether you're on the, the, um, you know, the, the, the practitioner side as a doctor or whether you're a system, whether you're in the, the, the med tech or I probably have that wrong. I just like to throw a tech at the end, anything, fintech, whatever, anything else that we're in. Uh, you know, what kind of opportunities are you just seeing? Because you have a very unique vantage point coming from, of course, the tech background and now, you know, growing a company to a good size and being on that and that really the cutting edge of some things that are going on in testing. Um, Like what kind of opportunity are you seeing? I think the the entire industry is ready for a lot of opportunistic change. You know, doctors are using software that looks like it's from the 80s. Um, (laughs) So they could probably use some help. Also, I think they spend 50% of their time in front of a screen, not in front of a patient. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how can we help doctors spend more time with their patients? Um, think about how do we build the next Slack tool for doctors, you know, and patients. So just doctor software, probably ripe for disruption. Um, labs, you know, they, they work with old school software and, and sometimes some old dated technologies as well. So somebody who, you know, can build the next generation analyzer, you know, think of that Star Trek device that can scan your blood without even poking your finger. Um, Lots of like hardware stuff, you know, that we could definitely innovate on. Patient facing technologies. I mean, the patients barely ever see their own data. And that's where I'm always focused on is giving patients an amazing experience. But, you know, we're, there's so many other conditions out there. Uh, There's a lot of other different types of patients. You know, I don't think we do a good job servicing people who have, you know, potentially individuals who are blind. How do they read their data? So, you know, creating medically available data for every individual, there's just so much opportunity to build tools, technologies, softwares, hardwares across the board. Yeah, it's exciting. I feel like it's a it's a whole healthcare renaissance when I see some of the things that are taking place. Even like I remember um, growing up, and you, you go to the dentist office, you see all those files in the back, and you're like, and now looking at time, like many offices are still running that way, right? You see all these files, and you're like, wow, I see them now, and I'm like, that's opportunity, like that's yep. uh, that's inefficiency, and there's better ways to do it, and there's going to be a lot of smart people out there that figure this out, and I mean, we all benefit. The way I look at it is. All of us at some point, whether we're using lots of um, healthcare now, at some point we're going to need it. And I like having smart guys like you, the, the men and women out there that are solving problems so that when I need it as I age or when whatever happens in my life, like it's there. So that's the selfish part for me there. Yeah. No, you got it. I mean, just as an example, uh, fax is still a HIPAA compliant, mm-hmm. regulatory approved way to communicate with your doctor. Mm-hmm. But what patient has a fax machine in their home, right? Yeah. So we got to catch up with the times for sure. That's awesome. So uh, we're recording this uh, for the audience, just for context. We're recording this in May of 2021. So, you know, the numbers are looking better on COVID in the United States, at least, but in other places, not necessarily. Um, what kind of things are you seeing just in, in healthcare in relation to opportunity and ways to solve, you know, problems related to COVID and what, what you've seen? Uh, well, as everyone knows, last year when COVID kind of came out of nowhere, we had to use pretty dated technology for screening, Uh, PCR technology, probably everyone knows that nasal swab um, and that very painful method, very annoying method, and and certainly not something that was cheap and easy to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we relied a lot on PCR technology last year. And, you know, thankfully this year, we're starting to see a lot more rapid tests. And so you're seeing companies put out $5 tests, $9 tests that you can buy at Walgreens that gives you answers in 10 minutes. I mean, that's just, that's like, an order of magnitude better than it was last year. So the the term rapid testing 
um, and being able to do point of care testing, we should all start to get familiar with that because you know, rapid testing for COVID is one thing, but what if we can start doing rapid testing for things like allergies yeah. or diabetes, you know, Man. or pre-diabetes. And, you know, if you can buy a $19 test or less yeah. and just do that monthly, you can see that, Hey, I'm, I'm on the right side of my health here. Mm-hmm. So I'm really hoping there's a lot more kind of innovation in the rapid testing space. And uh, we're doing what we can in that space as too, but I, I think we're going to see a lot more companies jump in there too. Mm-hmm. So speaking of what you're doing, let's uh, let's uh, crack open. Uh, I'm aware. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the company. I know um, just to start us out. Yeah. So you know, we started. I'm aware with the idea that instead of waiting for yourself to get sick and then going to a doctor to practice sick care, uh, doctors are amazing at helping you. You know, kind of recover from an illness or a symptom or a condition, mm-hmm. or get the right therapies. You know, to keep you healthy. What if we could practice something called healthcare, where potentially you don't have to go to the hospital or you can go to the doctor more periodically, just kind of like a check in and make sure that things are going well. And so I'm where it was built around the promise of being able to practice healthcare at home where you can run common screening tests, even advanced screening tests Mm -hmm. for things like heart disease and doing that really kind of cheap, fast, effectively and easily from home. Uh, was what I'm always all about. So we started building these kits to do that and then building a really easy to use digital platform. So just being able to go online and take these tests, get support when you needed and be able to read results that you actually could understand and then share with your doctor. So that's what I'm always all about. It's just trying to like make testing at home easy and make actioning those results really easy through digital. So give me an a, um, example of, let's just say the user journey. So I'm watching this program right now and I'm thinking to myself, oh, this sounds interesting. Um, what kind of like, maybe I need to look at heart disease runs in my family or diabetes, or, you know, I have, I've, you know, I've felt like maybe I've had some insulin spikes or something. I don't really know. And I should go to a doctor and I'm not saying I'm not going to go to a doctor, but I'm thinking like, maybe this test is a good start. Um, I, tell me, take me through the user journey. Yeah, absolutely. So especially with COVID, we saw a lot of people who had all those questions Mm -hmm. and then kind of afraid to go to the traditional lab, you know, where there were lots of other people and they were afraid of getting COVID. So, you know, people would uh, pick up our men's and or women's health test. It's Mm -hmm. basically an annual checkup to look at a lot of those common markers, like you said, your thyroid, or if you're male, your testosterone, prostate, your heart risk, your prediabetes risk. And so they go online and through a very quick kind of identification process, you know, confirm that that test is right for them. Yeah. And then it's pretty standard e-commerce, right? What we've gotten used to with Amazon, you get this kit delivered to your door. Uh, We send you email companion instructions, printed instructions, you get to watch uh, an easy to watch video Mm -hmm. to help you collect your own sample. Mm -hmm. And literally three minutes later, you know, your sample is captured from your finger and you put it back in the baggie and uh, return it back to the lab. Uh, you know, in a lot of places, actually, we're even exploring where the FedEx or UPS truck comes to your house and just picks it up for you. So you don't even have to leave your home. Mm. And really, you just did your entire lab test at home. And then uh, several days later, you get this email saying, hey, your your results are ready, log into our secure portal. Mm -hmm. So it's the same kind of portal you'd use for your online banking. And you put your username and password in and you see your results there. It describes for you Mm. how we tested your sample, what the results were explains it nicely in English and then helps you get connected with resources and telemedicine next steps and even guidance on what you can do next. And that's really it. And so in a matter of kind of five to seven days, you can have all of that done end to end. Wow. This is, I mean, it it just makes it easy. I mean, this sounds really, really easy as opposed to having to get out, go drive, especially, you know, as you mentioned, COVID, other things like that, not wanting to be in, uh, you know, these public places per se. And for me, even before COVID, if I could have had something like this in general, I don't want to, I mean, I'm one of those people that you said, they're like, they don't want to, they just don't want to go. But maybe, maybe if it's coming to your door, you're used to that experience, just like your Amazon packages or other packages. And you're like, okay, I have to collect a sample, send it back, done, read the, I mean, very simple what kind of um what kind of what kind of um feedback have you heard from this because i mean i mean you've got you've sold a lot a lot of kits first of all and you can mention that of course um but uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten yeah so one of the things uh, we learned early on is that a lot of people have high deductibles in their insurance mm-hmm. and they probably don't know that until they have to use healthcare, and then all of a sudden they're surprised with the fact that like a test like that might cost them 
200 bucks. Mm. And a lot of people have really high deductibles or even maybe no coverage. And so for the fact that our average test price is $99, wow. uh, we learned right away that it's actually almost cheaper to use I'm aware than to go to the doctor in the lab traditionally because of the high deductible. Um, so we got lots of validation that, you know, keeping that price under a hundred dollars was definitely something we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, like to your point, a lot of people just said, love the fact that I can kind of do this all at home, right? Click at home, mail comes to my home, the kid I do at home, it sends back the results come at home. Telemedicine comes to me. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't have to now take time off work, yeah. you know, drive around, look for parking, then go back home, then fast, then go back to the lab. Like. It used to be such a like, you know, crazy kind of pathway to try and get results. And now it's just pretty simple. You click, you get your box, you get your results. Let's talk about the, uh, the end part of that user experience. So like actionable next steps or what's next. So now let's say that I, I, you know, I did the test, I got my results back and maybe there's some things and obviously um, we're not going to go into all of them, but you know, some things that are, that are manageable that I need, that are need to like address, we'll say. Um, what, let's talk about next steps and how that looks. Yeah. So let's pick on something pretty easy. Like we have a test for vitamin D and, um, a lot of people actually have, you know, kind of lowered vitamin D and actually surprisingly, you know, small number of us, but like say 5% of people actually have really, really low vitamin D. Mm. Um, and that's something that's very easy to address, um, where you just, you know, to get the consult with our doctor, they validate the results. And certainly it's, Hey, why don't you introduce some vitamin D supplementation into your diet, increase your food intake of foods, rich in vitamin D. And here's a few more resources that can help you along that path. Mm -hmm. And then let's take a look at monitoring you in about six to nine months, uh, and, and see where you're at. So that one is very easy for people to action or, you know, kind of similarly, like with cholesterol. It's, it's something that, again, if it's not really highly elevated, mm -hmm. but, you know, in that kind of orange zone, yellow zone, where it's like, hey, this is something you need to action, yeah. diet and lifestyle can fix that for a majority of people. And then, so that's where we see a lot of people is kind of getting these results and seeing that, hey, I'm just a little high on that marker. Let, let me make this, you know, let me take this into control. Uh, but every once in a while, we also do get individuals who are highly elevated, you know, individuals who have prostate cancer and they didn't even realize it. Wow. And so in those circumstances, the doctor will, you know, ensure that they get connected with a specialist mm -hmm. because now that's getting beyond the scope of what we can do. So we identified it for them. They now became aware and then they became connected with a specialist who can actually take care of that before they have, mm -hmm. you know, potentially something worse happening for them. So yeah. we've had even those situations take place. Um, and then certainly even during COVID, we've done a lot of COVID testing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we were testing people who came back positive, um, through a doctor consult, we were able to guide them if they were comfortable being at home. And in many cases, we said, based on your symptoms and even just listening to you speak on the phone here and what you've described, you need to go to a hospital um, so that you don't just ultimately kind of suffer at home. So I, it's really important that that doctor gets involved to help guide that next step. Mm -hmm. And like I said, a lot of times it's, uh, it's really easy diet and lifestyle changes. Yeah. And, you know, in other cases, it's pretty severe and you've caught it early. So let's get you to that other specialist. Man, that's amazing. Because things, things like you were speaking of, like the cholesterol part of things, especially depending on what your age bracket is, like we kind of let it go. We're like, uh, but if you have this routine or you have these things, you can, you know, check, you can check it with some, some things with lifestyle, as you mentioned. And ultimately that, that's the big side of preventative medicine, not just obviously to extend the quality of your life, hopefully, um, and, and to decrease the amount some of these problems will cost you in the future because very costly. Um, just if you can get, get a couple extra gym workouts in, eat a little better. Better and you and you and you get those markers back in place. I mean, you're gonna be way happier over the long haul. But then on the other side of things, as you mentioned, I mean, you're saving lives. Like there's people that like if they didn't go in to get that, um, like as you mentioned, they may have been diagnosed with something like a prostate cancer or something, other things like that. If they didn't go and they're and you know missing out on on you know doctors' visits for years and years and years. I mean, this is an easy way for them to get some get some answers up front, and it's and it's private, it's quick. Um, this makes total sense. Um, I'm sold. Put it that way, Tommy. I mean, like I, I'm in. Um, I, I like this, and I'm and I and you're you're. I feel like this was made for my exact demographic because all the things that you mentioned, I I, I fall in those categories. Um, mm -hmm. Let's get a little bit more into just the, the the construct of the company, like things like any type of revenue you want to share, numbers. I know you're raising money right now for your Series B, like future plans and growth. I mean, let, let's go along that path. So um, where do you want to start there? 
Yeah, well, so we got, um, you know, it's a pretty quick story. Uh, 2017, we got going on this and built out our, our lab prototype. 2018, we received our kind of early seed funding um, from a private equity family in, in Houston, Texas. Uh, that got our Texas roots grounded there. And then through 2019 and 2020, we've been really kind of growing, expanding our test menu, um, offering COVID testing, especially to a lot of employers and uh, essential workforce members across the state of Texas and even nationally was definitely a, a growth moment for us where we had one of those, you know, 500% plus growth year over years. Um, so we saw some really big growth there. And, you know, now we're continuing to expand the tests we offer, the different lab partnerships we have. And we've got a lot of employers uh, want us to start testing their employees for more than just COVID and general wellness. So we're getting into things like like you said, preventing diabetes, you know, at employers uh, where they are responsible for the healthcare costs of their employees. So they really want to reduce the cost of those diseases that are absolutely preventable, uh, heart disease, diabetes, and even some, you know, some more discrete cancers. They're asking for us to, to bring those tests to market and offer it to them. So um, we're looking to do probably over 20 million in revenue this year. And, um, you know, that's, that's up uh, several hundred percent year over year. And you know, later in the year, we want to find that strategic investment partner that believes in our mission, that thinks that we can absolutely start screening for conditions at real scale, yeah. and we help uh, you know people really get in front of these types of conditions. So that kind of investment partner, you know, that's got a longer term horizon that really wants to make change in healthcare is is who we're seeking. And we've had some initial chats with uh, again some private equity firms that support growth in industries like what we're doing. So yeah, really excited to see how the year unfolds on that front. Man, that is exciting. And, and what a path. So starting in 2017, uh, obviously, um, prior to a lot of the COVID things that are happening, be having that infrastructure in place. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just so important, especially from the um, venture capital community and otherwise, um, to, to think about these things, to be out in front, like think about the, like how many tests would you say maybe during the, or how many COVID tests, just roughly, um, would you say that you've done over this whole time span? Like just roughly. Yeah, I mean, even COVID, we did over 100,000 tests for COVID. Wow. Uh, and those were all very specialized tests, like, you know, in the middle of nowhere in Texas, yeah. uh, the solar site, or, you know, uh, up in Minnesota or wherever it was, we were helping employers test their, their essential workforce members. Or with the city of Houston, uh, we did a lot of work there where, where people who were either uh, aged or, or disabled and they couldn't get to the, to the public mm -hmm. testing sites, we sent people to their homes to test them. So wow. a lot of like really specialized testing when it came to COVID. Wow. And that, and that just goes to show like if you didn't start this back in 2017, if you weren't uh, a mission based company and focused on providing this type of value and if that infrastructure wasn't built and you had that initial investor like, you know, those hundred thousand tests wouldn't have been done, not by, by your company, at least. And maybe not at all. Who knows? Some of those people may have been overlooked, unfortunately, because, again, the infrastructure wasn't there or built. So I just think it's so important for us to invest and think about um, you know, the, the future of our healthcare system and always to kind of stay ahead of things. Cause obviously nobody saw, well, I shouldn't say nobody, but I didn't see the pandemic coming. I mean, I, I, a lot of other people that I know didn't. So, uh, so having these things like this, I mean, it's just a big benefit to society in my opinion. Yeah. Thanks. No, definitely. Nobody saw the pandemic coming. That's for sure. Awesome. So, um, that being said, um, if somebody is watching this and they want to learn more about, you know, about, about, I'm aware if they want to learn more, get involved, whether they're investors, whether they want to um, think about the, um, oh, one thing I didn't ask you actually um, is the medical side of the community. Um, like how do they work with I'm aware? So I know obviously from the, I know obviously from the patient side, like myself, I can call I, or I can, you know, order online, I get the information I need, but what about the medical side of things? How does that work? Yeah. So we actually work uh, hand in hand with kind of two sides of, of the medicine side of the world, we have what we call our, our scientific researcher team. So they're looking at new ways to use your information in your blood to identify conditions. So these biomarkers, so they're researching new biomarkers, we're helping fund new biomarker innovations and bringing those to light. So you're gonna to start to hear about some really interesting biomarkers uh, from I'm aware that are things that people have never looked at before. Um, wow. So for example, 50% of people who have heart attacks have normal cholesterol. So if cholesterol isn't the right marker to be testing for, what is? And you start to hear of things like 
inflammation, oxidative stress, genetic markers, and, and, you know, things that cover these cardiometabolic conditions mm. and, and people's heads just spin. It's like, Whoa, I thought there was just one test for cholesterol and heart disease. Yeah. In fact, there's probably more like five or 10. And so, you know, we're, we're going to try and simplify that for people so that they understand what tests to take and when. So lots of kind of stuff around heart disease and, and working with the scientists there to bring those tests to market. And then we also work with the, what I call the clinician side. So once you have data in your hand, you know, it's, it's the doctor's job to help you understand what to do next. Yeah. And so a lot of medical doctors like to work with us because they have patients that, you know, maybe they don't see too often, are afraid to come in due to COVID or in places like Colorado live a thousand miles away, you know, <laughs> in rural, you know, somewhere, nowhere, and don't always get a chance to go to do routine labs. So, you know, we've had a lot of medical interest in sending kits out for those types of purposes mm. so that the doctor can then be prepared with information when they ultimately see their patient. So we work with the medical community on that side. So we work with kind of both sides of, uh, of both the science and the clinical side of, of mm. medicine. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I'm glad I got that part out. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, what, what do the doctors do? Like, how does the research happen? Like what, like what's next for I'm aware and uh, I'm glad you cleared that up for me. Um, so if somebody is watching this and they want to learn more, whether they're on the medical side of the community and they want to learn more um, about, or they're, you know, they, they want to order a kit. They want to learn more about that part. Like what's the best people, what's the best way for people to follow up and to connect? Well, hundred percent. I'd love to speak to anybody uh, on your show. You know, if there's any questions from being an entrepreneur to understanding maybe their own health journey, mm -hmm. uh, we're here to help. Our website, you know, is accessible at imaware.health, I-M-A-W-A-R-E.health. Uh, there's a link to get in touch with me on there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. Uh, my email's on the website too. I'd love to talk to all patients. I, I talk to patients all the time. Um, it, it's really what keeps me inspired in doing this. Uh, so our website's a great resource. And on our website, we have hundreds of pieces of content, medically reviewed, free of charge, where you can see things like 10 foods you can eat to reduce your cholesterol, you know, five activities you can do to increase your overall health. Um, if you're just struggling for resources or don't know where to find good news, every one of our you know pieces is third-party medically reviewed and, and very accurate and, of course, free. So just take advantage of what we put up on our website for content. Fantastic. It really been a pleasure having you on the show today. Um, hope the viewers got a lot out of this. I sure did. Um, if you're watching this for the first time, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to come back and be a return listener and return visitor. And uh, it's really been a pleasure. Great having you on the show today. Thank you.